Today we're testing fuel filters and specifically which ones cause the most pressure drop. Does price matter? Will the cheap ones perform the same as the expensive ones? Is there any noticeable difference at all? We're going to put them all to the test and find out. So let's get started. So why is fuel pressure a key factor in the fuel system? Well, it's very important for the carburetor because if you set your regulator based on what the carburetor's needle and seat can handle at let's say 6 PSI for example, then that is what you want the carburetor to see. And possibly down the road as you're in the tuning process, you can adjust down or typically sometimes up a little bit on the pressure to fine tune the system. That's why a pressure regulator is so important. It gives you an another adjustment point within the system and if you are not seeing that six psi that you are setting at the at the pressure gauge or at the regulator at the carburetor then that is a big problem so that's what this test is designed to do is to figure out exactly what the pressure that the carburetor is going to see post the filter post the regulator so that's what this test is going to involve so before we get started we really need to talk about the dynamics of fluid theory and how it applies here Nah, we're not doing any of that. So here's the basics of how this is going to work. I'm going to take a tank, fill it with fluid, and then we're going to feed it to a gravity feed it to a electric fuel pump like a lot of typical fuel systems are designed for. Then do a regulator and then we're going to put a pressure gauge in the system so we know exactly what is coming out of the regulator. Very typical to do that. Then we will install the fuel filter and then another pressure gauge on the other side of the fuel filter to see if there is a pressure drop. Once we're set at the regulator and we're dialed in on the first gauge and it goes through the filter, then we will know exactly what the situation is. Will all of these filters filter the same and have the same amount of pressure or pressure drop on the other side of the filter? That's the key we're going to find out. That's the important figure here because we, again, we need to know what the carburetor is seeing. That's the important side of it. That's what the pressure regulator there is is for to make sure that the carburetor is getting the exact pressure that we're asking it to give. And that's why we're running two gauges here to see what that pressure drop is. Now I'm using brand new everything in this test, brand new fuel pump, brand new regulator. I bought brand new aeromotive liquid filled zero to 15 PSI gauges and all brand new filters. None of these have been run on an engine before. None of these have been out of the package before. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take a brand new fuel system setup and we're going to put it through the paces and test each filter to see how they come out. Now, while we build the fuel system here, let me make a couple of things kind of clear. I am not sponsored by anybody. Nobody bought me any of this product. I paid for all of this out of my own pocket. Most of it was bought through Summit. A few of these pieces from Jegs and a couple of them off Amazon. Every tool that I used, every product, all the Fregola hose and fittings, the Edelbrock product, everything was bought through a retailer and I am not sponsored by anything. So I am I have no skin in the game here. I don't care which one wins. I don't care which one loses. I just want to know what the end results are. So before anybody asks, no, this is not sponsored. I, I literally bought all of this off of the from those retailers. The second thing in here is we've talked about that fuel system chart that I've shown a bunch of times on a lot of different videos and placing different components within the system obviously has meaning. And I wanted to show this just to show that if you put a filter right before the carburetor, which is really not a bad idea, it doesn't matter what size it is or what micron it is or what type it is, it's not a bad idea to try to keep as much garbage out of the carburetor as possible. But I wanted to show what the difference is when you put components in different places within the system. And sometimes you're not always going to get the result that you think you're going to get. And that's what the purpose of this video is to see exactly what the pressure drop is, see if we have any problems that come up with. And that's the whole reason behind this test. So let's get started and I'll show you how the, what the fuel system is made up of here when it's all complete. Now let me run you through the fuel system setup here. We have a holding tank that is full of mineral spirits. It is gravity fed down to the fuel pump, which is also now connected to the pressure regulator where we can set the pressure. First gauge there to measure that. Then the filter goes into the system and then post filter is the second gauge so we can look to see if there's a pressure drop. 
also a valve within the system here so I can control how much fuel is running through the system. Now, fuel pumps and fuel systems on street cars don't run at full capacity. They just trickle into the carburetor, and that's what that is designed to do, is to put some back pressure on the system and only trickle a little bit of fuel, in this case mineral spirits, out the front side of the uh, uh, carburetor or into the carburetor so that's what the system is going to look like very very simple very very compact but designed the way a fuel system works we are switched so i can turn it on and off we have a relay so we can get the full amount of power to the pump so it will run at capacity and that way all the, the power the pressure at the pump everything will be very very consistent within the system but that's how we're going to run it Mineral spirits, one more time. The reason why we're using that is because it has pretty close to the same specific gravity as fuel. And that's what fuel pump companies use to test their pumps out. And let's be honest, I don't want two gallons of raw fuel uh, in my garage going through a system with, you know, my wiring and, and everything else that could happen. So that's how we're going to use it. Now let's get to some filters. So let's talk about the filters that I selected for this test. Quite honestly, I selected something that was on the shelf and ready to ship immediately. Nothing that was on back order, nothing that shipped from the supplier, nothing that shipped in one to two weeks, just stuff that was on the shelf and available immediately. And reason being is everything's on back order right now. Everything's a little bit slow. The other piece of criteria was they all had to be 10 micron filters. And I didn't care the brand, I didn't care the style, I didn't care the length, I didn't care the cost. I just wanted 10 micron filters. That was it. And if it gave me a cross section of types of filters that we could look at, then perfect. That was exactly what I wanted. Now I ended up with uh, regular paper elements in the All Star and the Molar filter. The I believe the Tanks Ink tank uh, um, or filter is also a a paper element filter on the inside. I'll have to cut it apart. It's a non-serviceable item. Once it's done, you just throw it out and it's over with. The Earl's one is a bronze element, and the Aeromotive one is what they call a micro glass element. And finally, the Jegs is a, I don't know how to describe it, it's just a tiny little uh, stainless pancake filter. Um, it's a little unimpressive, to be honest with you, but we'll see how it performs in the test. And we're, honestly, we're not looking at how these filter, because we're going to assume that all of these have really good filtration. What we're going to test here is... Is there pressure drop post filter for in the system? If you set the pressure regulator, in this case, we're going to set it at 6 PSI for all of these and then test through all of them and see if the pressure drops on the other side of the filter. Does the filter restrict the flow? Does the filter restrict the pressure or does it maintain it? Those are important questions, especially when talking about how to fuel a carburetor and tuning points and adjustments and problems that you're having, how you solve those problems is going back into the system and correcting the issues. So we're going to put these six filters to the test kind of in random order, but I'm going to do all the dash eight stuff first because I can set the fuel system up for it. Then we'll do the barbed and the quick disconnect stuff here next. So let's get started.
So what did we learn here today? Obviously, it is very important where in the fuel system you place these filters. If you're going to put a filter after the regulator, you need to ensure that the pressure that the carburetor is seeing is what you have at the regulator and what you want it to hit with. Obviously, these are all a little bit different. Now, the variances were pretty strong when it came down to the best as far as pressure drop all the way down to the worst in pressure drop, but certainly all of them had a little bit of a variance and you've got to take that in, into consideration because when you are tuning for power, for fuel economy, for whatever type of performance you're looking to get out of it, obviously the pressure that the carburetor sees is critical. So we talked about that in depth many times in the fuel system here and that's the reason why I've always put the pressure regulator after the filters and right before the carburetor. That way I know exactly what the carburetor is going to see. And when you look at the results of all these and what, how have these all fared out as far as the worst all the way up to the best, there was a little bit of variance between some filters that didn't have a lot of money to them, or at least didn't cost a lot. And really the best filter of them all costs the most. And I guess it all goes back to you get what you pay for. And certainly the results pan out here that the most expensive filter was certainly the best performing. Now, would any of these other filters do well in the system? Sure. I don't think you could argue that all of these had, or at least most of these had a very good result. When you look at the results, again, the Aeromotive was the most expensive filter at $152.16 at retail, but there was practically no pressure drop. You could put that filter post-regulator right before the carburetor and be fairly certain that that is the pressure you're going to see at the carburetor. And if that is just that tiny little amount that's a difference, I think you could probably say that that's a wash, given that wide open throttle the pressure is going to drop a little bit the more fuel flows through the system. We can see that when we opened up the valve all the way, when I drained the system every single time to change filters, that when it's wide open throttle, it takes an awful lot of pressure to maintain whatever pressure you had it set at originally. So it's very, very, uh, I mean, it's, I, I hate to say it, but it's almost kind of obvious. The most expensive filter performed the best. The cheapest filter in the molar, at $599 did not perform bad, but is that 0.8 drop in PSI, is that enough? Or are you okay with that in a system? And to me, the answer to that is no, I wouldn't be okay with it. I would be okay with 0.2, 0.3 maybe, but you've got to take all that into consideration when you are working with your fuel system and trying to get the carburetor to see exactly the PSI that you're setting the regulator at. So when we look at this chart and see what it is from best to worst, I was a little surprised that that Earl's filter was as bad as it was. That is horrible at 4.7. Now price is good on it and maybe it's because it's that bronze type of filter that it's getting that result in it. I don't know. Maybe we need to test more bronze filters to see if they all have a pressure drop in it, whether it's a very expensive filter or a very cheap filter. It's something to think about down the road. We may, I may run that test again and run nothing but paper filters in one and then run nothing but these bronze type filters in another and see if it pans out. But hands down, that the winner is Aeromotive. I knew that from my years of using it, but I had nothing to back it up with. And now I can say definitively that in a very, very controlled bench test, clean filters, brand new pump, brand new regulator, that filter won hands down. So again, maybe down the road, we'll do another test with it. But certainly there's some of these that I would not use. I do not like the way that this filter is with uh, that very, very small little pancake filter. It's just not going to last that long. The more junk and crap that you have in your system, the quicker that's going to get plugged up. At least even with a very, very cheap plastic clear filter in this $6 molar filter, at least you know that it's got some surface area to do some filtering. And it may not be the best filter. It may not be the best in for pressure drop. But at least you know it's a good filter. And that's what you need to be first and foremost is a very good filter. 
and then you need it to be consistent at what pressure that it drops in the system or that it delivers great pressure based on the flow through the through the filter. So I hope that answered some of your questions for you. It was one of the biggest ones that I had as far as how filters work. Now, I think you could probably argue that all of these, other than this pancake little thing here, probably filter very well. We know that a bronze type filter filters well. The paper element filters have been around forever. I'm assuming there's a pe paper filter in that tanks filter. I'm going to cut it apart later on and see. And we know the, the Aeromotive obviously is top notch with that micro glass filter that's in there. And obviously the Air All Star one has plenty of surface area. So I hope you guys got something out of it. If you thought it was cool, please leave me a thumbs up. If you thought I should have run this test differently, please let me know. Again, the whole idea was this was just to grab what was available on the shelf in stock right now in a wide variance of prices and different styles of filter to see which one was the best and find out which one was the worst. So if you got, like I said, if you got something out of it, please leave me a thumbs up. If you have any questions or if you want to tell me that I did it wrong, I will, I will listen to that as well. Maybe we'll rerun re this test again down the road. So that's it from here. We'll catch you guys on the next video. We'll see you.